Sponsored by Squarespace. And how, how big did you say it was? Nine inches. Nine, nine inches. Uh, and it's only VCR, is it? Okay. Kids, this is actually how it used to be. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 53. 53? It's, it's 53, right? Is anyone keeping track? Does anyone care? Today, uh, I wanted to make a miniature. I want to play a game of Stargrave soon. And I needed like a... Anyway, I needed a particular miniature. And I could go out and I could go look for it. I could go and buy it somewhere, you know. But I thought I, I'll take some pieces I've already got and convert them into something I actually want. Uh, like a miniature conversion. Now, I could have said... You know convert your minis for warhammer or convert your minis for age of sigma you know i could have stuck a big warhammer logo on my thumbnail but i didn't because i respect you too much but by all means if you want to convert your warhammer and your games workshop minis please do i don't think games workshop want you to do it to be honest um you know but you know do what you want you know they're not in charge of you or are they what Cat says they are in charge of you. Don't worry, he's, he's a big Games Workshop fanboy anyway. Don't worry about him. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to make a miniature, a 28 millimeter scale, uh, probably using some pre-existing bits. Technically, it's a conversion, almost like a scratch-built mini, to be honest. I'm going to design it first and then see where it goes from there. So, you know, standard build episode, you know. Oh, and I got, I got this. got TV in here because I'm just a bit, bit, you know, big time now flash uh, I mean I suppose you can see it from from there keeps me warm on the cold you know nights here in the workshop anyway So sometimes when I build stuff, I like to just improvise, you know, just grab a load of junk, stick it together, see what happens. But sometimes I like to sketch and actually develop an idea. And that's what I'm going to do today. So my miniature idea that I'm trying to develop is a, well, it's an exosuit. It's like a mecha suit that, you know, a person can wear, which makes them stronger, run faster, reach the higher shelf in the supermarket, you know, that kind of thing. So usually uh, an exosuit design is like mechanical pipes, you know, it just kind of goes on top of a person. I wanted to go a bit, uh, you know, I wanted to go alien. This is an alien exosuit, but humans can use them, you know. Uh, I mean, you have to amputate both arms and legs to fit in the thing. And once you're in it, you can never get back out again. But that's the idea. That's the thing. You know, it's the price you have to pay for getting those items on the top shelf and, and, and super strip, you know. So my patrons are all fully aware because I share my sketchbook pages with them on a regular basis. Uh, but everything I design and make on this channel uh, is kind of canon. It's all related to a world that I'm building uh, for tabletop games and, and stories and things like that. And it's called Tapu, the planet. Um, and I'm not going to go through the history of it now, but I might talk about it in the painting section. But yeah, this suit can be found there. You know, uh, rusters use these suits if you know what rusters are. Uh, and I think I wanted it to be a machine, but not look like a machine. You know, it's kind of more like a dead crab, you know, a crustacean. It kind of looks like it's been grown rather than built, you know, uh, and that's kind of what I'm going for. Very creepy. You know, once you put it on, you can't take it off. And people that wear these suits are kind of a bit shunned in public spaces. You know, they kind of cover themselves up uh, and they call them scarecrows because they kind of remind humans of scarecrows uh, and they're scary. So I just took a bit of a lore dump there, but I'll be taking the real big lore dump on your chest in the painting section of this video because painting's boring. Uh, don't don't try and deny it. Painting's boring. So this episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, if you've ever wanted to make a website and you're not really sure how to do it, 
Squarespace is the place to go. Look, you get provided with hundreds of templates like these just here, and they're all pretty cool designs, I'll give them that. And uh, say you wanna make a website about pickles. Look, oh, there we go, there's a pickle website. You can literally open this up, change the names. There you go, you have a pickle website. So I decided to make a website of my own for bill making stuff. Now I've made plenty of websites in the past and I have to say that Squarespace is the easiest and most intuitive website builder I've ever used. It's uh, so easy to get great effect. I mean, look at this, this took me like five minutes. Uh, so if you wanna make a website, click on the link down below. There is a sale going on, uh, there you go. So this is my big bits box. This is basically all the miniature parts I've never used. And to be honest with you, I don't really know where I got most of this stuff from. There's so many weird random bits in here. But what we're looking for today is a very nice torso, you know, as your dad would say. So I'm looking for a bit that's kind of human, but a bit skinny, maybe, you know, a bit more malnourished than that, you know. Yeah, like a zombie torso would work quite well. Maybe one with the, yeah, perfect. We're gonna use that one, I think. So as for heads, uh, I kind of like the face on this guy. He's really serious, looks miserable, but this bloke has a really good beard. Now, if they could just have like a little beardy, gaunt, miserable face baby, it doesn't work like that, does it? So, like I said earlier, we don't want any arms and legs, and we, we do need a head, we'll stick a head on there. And uh, there we go, he's all ready for his exosuit. So some of you out there are probably thinking, Bill, why don't you just 3D print a miniature? You know, design it on your computer, 3D print it, there you go, you've got your miniature. Uh, yeah, you could do that. If you really want a miniature that bad, you can do that. For me, I'm gonna use cocktail sticks because I like the craft, you know, I like the problem solving, you know, how can I create this miniature using this crap over here? Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all for new tech, you know, especially in this hobby, 3D printing is amazing. It is an amazing thing to do if you've got this hobby. But if you're making YouTube videos, I don't think people want to sit there and watch you 3D print, in my opinion, you know. Let me know if you differ in opinion down below. But I just don't think it's show worthy, you know, here, pushing a button, 3D printing something. That's just my opinion. But um, anyway, if you like the craft, here's a bit box, by the way. Stick around, subscribe, like it, share it with your friends who like crafting and problem solving too. Rent over. I wanted my exosuit to have a rib cage, you know, and these little ring things, I cut them in half and they make a cool like rib cage. Rib cages work as like a defense and also they look pretty creepy. So, you know, two for one. These little half hemispherical rhinestones are gonna be knee joints and hip joints and things like that. I'm gonna sculpt on top of all this later, so don't worry, um, but yeah. This is the fun bit, by the way. And a few spikes here, and there is the basis of our sculpt. Basically, that's the skeleton. It's always easy, once this part's done, you know, to just add things on top, you know, like green stuff. But firstly, we need to make some hands. So it is well known that hands are hard and claws are easy. So I'm gonna go in between, like kind of free fingered long hand claw things. Uh, and I'm gonna use EVA foam and wire. So hands on a 28 scale miniature is always gonna be fiddly, you know, and you, I kind of like to move them about once they're stuck down, you know, bend them into position. So by sticking them in EVA foam like this, trimming them down, it's a really kind of strong bond and you can kind of bend those fingers all day and uh, they don't break. So there you go, there's a hand and there's another one. So I'm gonna use these long, thin glass beads for fingers, you know. Um, it will look kind of a bit more crab-like, if you know what I mean, like a segmented, armor-plated fingers. Crabs don't have fingers, but you know what I mean, like their legs. Um, and it will look almost machine-like, but still organic, that's my thinking. Good thing about them being made out of wire is you can bend them into a good position. You trim those nails and there we go, there's some pretty cool, creepy hands. Anyone who follows me on Instagram, or, you know, just follows me 
around the streets or just looked through my window could, could see that I was doing some watercolors you know I've been doing some watercolors recently I've been taking some of the builds I've made and I've kind of illustrated them and, and I uh, painted them once I've scanned these images into the computer and I've got a digital file of them I don't need the actual original illustrations so I'm going to show you them now it's just there so there's a bead bot and there's you know a weird monster thing and a rust husk you know you would recognize these from previous episodes a lot of you showed a bit of an interest in these on instagram so you know here's your chance to bid for some you know i honestly don't care what they go for any money i make will go on stuff for the workshop or for an episode oh, and you know toilet roll and food and things like that so if anyone would like to buy any of these i don't care if they go for 99p they're going to start at 99p uh, which is almost a dollar now so you know well done Tories they're on nice thick uh, quality paper yeah bid on them if you want them I'll stick a link down below uh, I used the money to buy new VHS tapes I've only got four at the moment I hear it was going to explode you know VHS that's, that's what I hear what no I didn't do any drawings of you I told you you said you were going to draw me like one of your French girls I did <laughs> I didn't did, did say that I didn't say that um you said it to everyone no I don't no I don't um I've never said that to anyone ever I don't know why I repeat what he says to me because I'm pretty sure you can't hear him so yeah I just incriminate my you know I'm just gonna get on with this don't forget links down below so I made this clamp using Jenga blocks and a screw uh you don't have to use Jenga blocks but they fit quite nicely in the hand and you know it works like that you just stick your legs in there yeah there you go clamped it's a clamp so a viewer kindly bought me this green stuff off of my Amazon wish list this is all I had left of my old packet and it's a bit crumbly I'm not sure it's gonna work too well but we're gonna use it I'm not gonna waste it so this stuff is a two-part epoxy putty I think and you need to mix the blue and the yellow together to make green you know color science that's your green stuff there yeah, look see it's green um, but you know I've never used it on its own before I've only ever used it mixed with miller putt uh, but I know a lot of people use it so I'm going to try it out this time it seems very kind of rubbery very much like green chewing gum um, but it seems to hold detail pretty well so doing these fingers were an absolute nightmare to be honest I couldn't get a good point on them uh, but I kept leaving fingerprints everywhere and I, then I remembered that you know you need to use some isopropyl alcohol mix that in with a bit of water brush it over and it kind of wipes away the fingerprints so I kind of did that a lot and it worked out pretty well so this armor is going to be crustacean like I mentioned before which means it's going to be very pockmarked and cracked and you know dimpled and textured textured's the word everything I designed seems to be covered in texture and uh, you know I don't think I could actually sculpt or make something polished you know like a nice clean Gundam mecha you know something like that I don't think I could do it uh, maybe it's a safety blanket maybe it's my aesthetic uh, I like to think it's my aesthetic but it's I know it's a safety blanket so before I destroyed any more detail on the piece I wanted it to cure for a few hours so I had this big bit of green stuff left uh, so I'm going to use it on the base I'm going to be really fancy pants and make a base with green stuff I would never ever use green stuff for a base it's you know it's not particularly cheap and unnecessary and it's a bit too extravagant for me but you know this stuff is just going to cure overnight anyway so it's just going to waste I guess what I'm trying to tell you and me at the same time is don't mix up too much green stuff in one go you know you really don't need that much and it you know it's going to cure in five hours anyway so yeah see it's cured so I opened up the new packet and I cut off a tiny bit of green stuff this should be plenty you know I do learn as I go hopefully you do too I mean hopefully you learn something by me learning as I go I've mentioned before this is a how I video not a how to this is how I do it you know hopefully you can learn from watching me make mistakes uh, I do put how to in the title of the video because you know YouTube says that's a more search for term than how I you know we all have to do our part for the algorithm I mean I could just stick a picture of my face on the thumbnail doing like an orgasm face you know like oh, no. that's not the noise I make by the way uh, but you know what I mean I could do that that's what YouTube seems to think people want to click on you know my face um, 
but I just I just can't I just can't do it. Uh, this is a texture roller, by the way, and this is like a little green stuff booger on my finger. You know, yeah. Always use the rest of your green stuff to make a texture roller. So, welcome to the painting segment of the video, or as we like to call it here, Bill's story time. Uh, I could sit here and talk about the painting, but you've you know you've seen a hundred videos talking about which color to use here and which color. I mean, to be honest, it's just wiping pigments over something with hairy sticks. So the scarecrow exosuit, I imagine you would find this somewhere in like, you know, in a desert, in some ruins somewhere, you know, it's, there's probably lots of them around, but there are ancient mechanical suits used by a species that no one knows the whereabouts of what they even look like uh, to get extra strength and agility, you know, they might not have even had arms and legs, which is why they built the suits in the first place. But as I'm human, you'd have to amputate both arms and legs to fit in and uh, you'd look like this creepy scarecrow guy forever because you can't come back out again. Once you're in, you're in. So I was having to think, you know, this suit is kind of organic in design and it needs to be powered, you know, it is a me mechanized suit, you know, and these orange globe things all over its body are kind of solar panels. Like most organic things, they get energy from the sun. This thing needs to absorb energy from the sun as well, you know, and it kind of stores it for future use. So these scarecrow suits are quite common, you know, around respite and places like that, you know, and people are afraid of them because obviously they've got super strength, you know, they are, they are scary to look at. And the more people are afraid of them, the more they don't talk to them, the more unsociable the scarecrow wearer gets and the more psychotic they seem to be. So it's kind of like a vicious cycle. The scarecrows come to town, buy supplies, things like that, you know, drink, have a drink at the bar, but you know, no one really wants to chat to them because you know what kind of weird psychopath would cut off your own arms and legs to fit in a mechanized suit so it's the end of the video uh it's quite a short one this one i guess because it's such a small miniature it didn't take very long to do so the video's not as long there's, there's, there's some correlation there it's always like this after a halloween episode you, you never know how to follow it up you know, because I put so much effort into those and then it's, then it's just a regular Bill episode, you know. But I hope that's what you're here for. Regular Bill. What? Can you stop interrupting while I'm talking to the camera? Co-star? You're not, you're not a co-star cat. You're, you're more like a mascot, you know? Like a mascot for... Not even that. Just something that's there. Yeah. Something that's there. All the time. Anyway, Glamour Shots coming up. I'll see you next week. Uh, bye. So here we go. Here's the Scarecrow Exo suit. I'm pretty proud of it. It wasn't easy to do. First time sculpting with green stuff. But basically the concept's there. I'm always happy when I take a concept from paper to miniature, you know, and it actually looks like the illustration, which is good. Uh, hope you think so. Comment down below. And I have a PO box now. So if anyone would like to send me anything, I'll stick the address in the description down below. If anyone would like to bid on the watercolors, I spoke about earlier I'll stick those links down below too and thank you patrons I mean it thank you patrons for sticking by me lots of you patrons have stuck by me forever and I you know I really appreciate it new patron challenge coming up and I really really really